Okay, I'm back. Um, last video was about generally collecting weather and where to put that data so you only have to collect it once and you can use it more than one time. Okay, I mentioned in there a spreadsheet that Sean Labrie did and I tweaked one thing on it and the rest of it is totally Sean's and we're looking at some other items to um, enhance it. But I wanted to just say, you and I together, we're going to take a tour of Sean's spreadsheet, which is available in the link below. It's on the uh, my Google Drive. And I'm letting you go into a folder. And in that folder are all the files associated with these blog entries. But it's the only spreadsheet in there. Okay. So what you see in front of you is a degree day part. And what I want to speak to is we'll just start on the first tab. And we'll see what he's done. So here he's got a weekly calendar. And what he's doing is he's got tasks. And he's calling out when to do them to remind himself. And I noticed that he's MP. Hmm. H-O. That might be Michael Phillips' Holistic Orchard. Could be. And he also references what pages they are. Good thinking. So tasks reminders about where to go back. It's, it's his calendar. It's how he wants to do things. But it's a nice linear go through the year calendar. So good, good stuff, Sean. Next item, tree stage calendar. Okay. What we've got here is the phases of blossom and maturity. Then he's going through silver tip, green tip, quarter inch green, half inch green, and then boom, uh, holistic stuff, orchard spray, recipe three spray, petal fall, scythe grass under the trees, uh, first tree mowing. So all these different tasks based on the maturity of the tree, which I think is super important. We get hung up on dates and the reality is it's what's, what is the season? This season might be different than last season. I can tell you this season, 2020, it's weird. <laughs> it's weird in a lot of ways, but out in the orchard, it's weird too. As I work on this video, it's snowing right now. Totally not happy about that. So anyway, so he's got, oh dear. Let's keep going. He's uh, mowing, leaf fall. So. But basically, he's starting at what I want to call a seasonal orchard calendar. That's a brilliant idea to help you remind yourself of the tasks to do and when you do them. Because it, it, it does get a little overwhelming. Um, probably like getting kids ready for school. You know, Same thing with the orchard. Next task. This is the part you've all been waiting for. The degree day calendar. What he's got in here is uh, several things. First of all, is you, you're strictly the date, we spoke to that, and the high and low temperature. Next, rainfall, I'm recording that. That helps me not only for Mary Blight, for wedding periods, but right now for apple scab. One of these days, I want to come up with a crude first order spreadsheet for scab because the big boys have their sheet, we need something too. And it comes out, it gives you degree days based on 50 degrees Fahrenheit. That is super, super important because even in the imperial system here in North America, there are different degree day models. For example, the oriental fruit fly. Yes, oriental fruit fly uses degree day 42 Fahrenheit, which is seven something Celsius. It has a different biological model. Okay, nothing's perfect. It's a model. It's an analog, but it uses DD42 as opposed to DD50. Uh, he's put some things in here. We'll get to more later, but he's put in triggers. So coddling moth, which has a biofix. Um, apple maggot fly. It comes around. I hate it. Japanese beetle doesn't have a biofix. It just it, you just integrate your DD50 numbers until you get into a range and you can predict that they're going to be coming out. Now, if it's extremely dry and the ground's hard, it delays them. I never have a problem with it being too dry here. 
forget about it. And Plum Cucurio. But I want to show you something here. This is DD50. But let's say I wanted just for myself for a moment to see what would DD42 do in there. I can go to this cell and change that 50 to a 42. And you'll see the table just recalculated it and is giving you DD42. All right, so I don't know about this DD50. That's a good reminder, but the sheet is flexible because if you wanted to, let's say you're on the metric system. You could put in DD10 and you would have recorded your temperatures in Celsius. So you have those options in the sheet and you can, you can localize it, but for the time being, we'll call it DD50. So it's, it's integrating, it's accumulating those degree days when the average, the median temperature for the day is greater than 50. How many degrees above 50 was it? Okay, that's how many degree days. It calculates that value and it begins integrating them to give you the total sum. So as of now, we have 21 degree days. It's been pretty, it's been cool. The weather has not really warmed up yet here up in Northwest Pennsylvania. Next slide. Notes, this part is brilliant. I really appreciate that he did this. It gives citations for everything that's behind this, the genesis of the models, the genesis of where did he get his degree day growing formula? Um, where did he get information about coddling moth? And then those degree day values are there. Uh, apple maggot fly, degree day values based on the apple maggot fly does have when they're first flying, so you'll have a trap out, you'll see them flying, you can work from that. But there's literature here, you can learn more about apple maggot fly. Japanese beetle, personal favorite, it's easy to trap, they're stupid. And plum cuculio. So, really nice call it footnotes, call it endnotes. The real bottom line is he cited his references and he went to credible stuff and you can go back to it and you can look at it and you can learn too. So thank you, Sean. That was stellar. Last part, was it sheet one? Oh, I threw that in. Sorry, I forgot. This is plotting my minimum and maximum temperatures because I was just curious and you can do that in Excel and doesn't cost you anything extra. But anyway, this is a tour of version 1.1 of the Sean Labrie Excel spreadsheet for degree day calculations. And as you can see, if you know Excel, but let's say your metric, making this thing do degree day 10 or degree day zero is not a big deal. You can put in the values you need. Now, those columns that had specific insects, we have not modified those columns yet to reflect metric. All right. But you would still have that base calculator saying, I recorded the min and max on these days and whatever base you're using, be it DD42, DD0, DD10, DD50, you will see your accumulation, your integration for degree days. And that's a good thing. So I hope this is useful to you. Please positive feedback. Appreciate it. Please subscribe, ring the bell, and most of all, please give me a thumbs up. Um, I'm, I'm working for you because I'm trying to stay out of trouble now that we're all kind of locked down. Take care. Later.